supporters of abortion rights are urgently calling on Congress to act. And with us now is Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois. Thanks so much for being here, Senator. You have heard the calls for action. What are Democrats prepared to do? Well, we are prepared to pass legislation, at least put legislation on the floor that would enshrine a woman's right uh, to a reproductive choice that we are uh, willing to put on the floor and hold people accountable. And you, know, you need to vote on this, whether or not you think that women should be in control of their bodies. And uh, I think that we should, uh, you know, codify Roe v. Wade into law, the right to access uh, the privacy rights uh, over your own body and your decision to what you want to do with your body. But a bill to codify Roe to protect abortion rights garnered only 46 votes in the Senate this past February. So that's far from the 60 votes that would be needed to actually pass this legislation. It's not even 50 votes which are needed if you got rid of the filibuster, right? So, I mean, is this more than symbolic? No, it's not. It's not more. It, it is something we need to do. And if we don't pass it now, we're going to keep working at it. and We're going to keep hammering away at it until we do get it passed, because obviously, uh, what has happened is the Supreme Court has indicated that they're about to rip away, you know, a small group of Supreme Court far-right justices are about to rip away what American women have thought was enshrined uh, uh, for the last 50 years and we have relied on 50 years, which is Roe v. Wade. We thought this was established law, uh, but now they've shown that they don't believe it's so. So the only thing that we can do as a legislative branch is to codify it. And we may not pass it on the first try, but we're going to keep trying until we do. Republicans who have been fighting to end up with a Supreme Court that might overturn Roe aren't exactly celebrating what is in this leaked draft opinion. Senator Mitch McConnell, for example, he wouldn't even answer questions about the contents of the leaked draft, only focusing on the leak itself. Listen. You need, it seems to me, excuse the lecture, uh, to concentrate on what the news is today. Not a leaked draft, but the fact that the draft was leaked. And that was the answer after he was pressed over and over again by Armani Raju to answer the question about, you know, the contents of what was in this leaked draft. Why be so evasive on something they've openly been fighting for all along? Does it surprise you Republican lawmakers aren't celebrating this as a victory? It's not surprising to me because, listen, studies have shown that over 70 percent, 70 percent of Americans believe that the right to choice should be legal. Um, and in fact, what the Republicans want to do to strip away uh, a reproductive choice from women uh, is not what the American people want. So of course, they want to hide from the truth. Listen, in a nation with a growing maternal mortality crisis, often inaccessible health care, without affordable child care or universal paid leave, you know, what they're doing is they're forcing births on millions of people, even when the mother's life could be at risk or even in cases of rape and incest. Of course, he's going to hide from it because he's wrong. He's in the wrong place on this. If Roe is overturned, how far do you think this could go? I think this would go a very long way. And one of the things that people are not talking about, you know, it's not just about abortion. Yes, that is critically important. It's about reproductive choice. In my case, it would it can go as far as to have prevented me from being able to use IVF, fertility treatments, to have my two daughters. Because many of the forms of, of IVF treatment uh, uh, would be counter to some of these laws that are being passed in these states that want to ban all forms of abortion. In fact, uh, you know, my, my doctor implanting an, a fertilized egg in me or having to destroy a fertilized egg um, because it, it wasn't viable uh, would not would be considered manslaughter. And in fact, I had to have a DNC. I had to have one of these procedures after I had a miscarriage. And I had to have it because I wanted to have a second baby so that I could have my rainbow baby. But I couldn't do that unless I had the DNC to make sure that I fully recovered from my miscarriage. What this could lead to is the loss of all sorts of access for all sorts of other um, rights that we in, we assume are enshrined in the Constitution, and yet the Supreme Court is saying if there is no word specifically to that, uh, then you're not entitled to that. Um, and it's really scary because I think about all the families that are trying to start families and won't be able to if these laws take effect. Justice Alito did write in this leaked draft opinion, quote, we emphasize that our decision concerns the constitutional right to abortion and no other right. Nothing in this opinion should be understood to cast doubt on precedents that do not concern abortion. Do you take him at his word there? I don't take him at his word there, uh, because what he also said was that 
you know, the word abortion is not enshrined in the Constitution. But you know what? Neither is privacy. The word privacy isn't in the Constitution either. Uh, uh, the, the enumerative rights that, that he does mention in this brief uh, talks about all of the other things that we assume are rights that, that we have that our founders never could even dream of. They couldn't dream of IVF, for example. And then certainly, you know, in vitro fertilization isn't in the Constitution. Uh, this has great potential negative effects all across the country. But let, let, let's focus back here. We're talking about taking away the reproductive choice, the right to reproductive choice for women that we've relied on for 50 years that it was in China law and Roe v. Wade. And by the way, some of these justices who are on this, who are agreeing to this uh, draft, said that this was established law. Well, obviously, they were not telling the truth when they came before the Senate uh, asking for us to confirm them. Senator Duckworth, thank you very much for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Thank you.